Now it's time to invite to speak to us the founding chairman, executive chairman of Alibaba Group, Jack. Jack may look modest to you, but his personal wealth of for $2 billion is equivalent to 62% of the total wealth of Kenya. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Jack Ma. This is my first day, and this day inspired me a lot. And I, I, I had ex high expectation before I came to Africa, but even that, the result in for a whole day today is better than I expected. And especially when I, I'm a very lucky person. In the past 18 years, in my apartment, I talked to 18 young people like me that we want to build up a company using internet to help doing business easier, to using internet to support every small business, support every young people, every woman, that if they have a dream, if they have some ideas, we will enable them to make their dream true and sell things, sell their products all over the world. That was the uh, nine, that was year two. 1999 in my apartment. Well, very few people believe that, but we made it happen in only 18 years. I'm a very, very lucky person. And people say, have you ever learned business before? Have you done business before? Have you learned the, like MBAs? No, I have never learned any knowledge about how to do business. I never got even one day of training of computer. I still doubt, still even to today, I don't know how computer works. <laughs> a lot of people challenge me, how can you run such a big e-commerce company without knowing, uh, without knowing the, anything about the knowledge, without anything about the financing and marketing? And I say, this is because I know people. I know what people want. I know what people don't want. And this is cricket. where I learned that. I learned my experience of working with people when I was a student in the university. I was not a good student. That's why I really don't like a lot of good students. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like a, a man the 10 or 15, never be got the number one, number two in my class from primary school to university. I failed three times for the universities. And finally, I got into the university. I still tell myself, I spend more time not try to be the number one, but try to be the number one person that can help and work with people. I was elected as the chairman of the students' union of my university, and later become the students' union, chairman of the students' union of whole our city. Our city has over 100,000 students, and I was the chairman of that university of that union. My job is to work with the people, listen to the students, do what I can do. This, I learned how to work with people because at that time we don't have any money. All right? The only thing you want to win the respect is by supporting other people. And when I graduate, I learned a lot from my job, my first job. I was trained to be a high school teacher. And because I was uh, supposed to be one of the best students in the school, so I was assigned to teach in university for six years. And I know one of the secrets of being a good teacher is always to finish class five minutes earlier. <laughs> no matter how wonderful you teach, if you have five more minutes teaching, students don't like you. If you finish earlier, efficient, and teach people, teach the students and share with the students how to learn instead of uh, putting all the knowledge in their mind, writing all the, all the things on blackboard, you will never be popular. 
I was selected as one of the best teachers in the university. But the one thing I learned from teachers later become a CEO is that a good teacher always expects his students to do better than him. Stu the teacher wants his students to be good. I want this student to be a banker, that be a mayor, that be a scientist. You don't want your students, this one bankrupt, that one in jail. <laughs> you always expect your students to be better. This is what I learned when I become an entrepreneur. I always want to hide the good people who are smart than I am and always making sure that they are better than I am. They always hope that they're better than expected. And if you want them better, training them, disciplining them, supporting them. So I learned a lot. The thing I learned most is being a teacher. I call myself CEO, Chief Education Officer of the company. So in my life, I'm telling people my age, I'm, I'm 53. In my past years, I'm always a good student. Keep on learning. You don't have to be the best, but you have to know who is better than you are and work with him. And always be a good teacher. A good teacher is share the knowledge and expect the other people better than you are. So these are the qualities that I learned and to be a CEO. So go back to this campus is always what I want. I remember 1994, the day when I decided to leave this college, go to do a business. My president said, why do why you want to go do something that called internet? There's no internet in China at that time. And why you want to? Because I said, President, I've been elected as the best teachers for university for three, three years. Everything I told my students are the things I learned from books. So if I go and build up something, and then go back, I can be a better teacher. This is my original thinking. I never thought I would be rich. I asked my wife when I started my business, I say, do you want your husband to be a rich person or to be a person that be respected? She said, you will never be rich. <laughs> <laughs> I, she's right, because nobody thought, my father, my parents never thought I would be rich. Because I don't have a gene of being rich. So even to today, because it's true, my, my schoolmates, my classmates, my teachers, my parents, n nobody thought I would be rich. This guy been filled for so many times. How can you be rich? I never thought I would be rich. Even to today, people say, Jack, you are one of the richest people in China, in the world. I think this is not my money. I th to me, it's just to think uh, I'm living in a dream. When you have a 1 million, that's your money. When you have a 20 million, that's the problem. You have to think about the valuation, where should I put the money, invest the real estate, or buy stocks, or invest the VC. Most of them, they were gone. When you have one, more than $1 billion, that's the money belong to the society. And people in the society trust that you can spend the money better than government. So they give you the money. <laughs> and do better. So I thought, I have the responsibility to spend the money better, more efficient. This is, this is what I did. So my wife said, be a person that can be respected, not be a person that be rich. And this is all I just want to do. And I, I'm sharing a lot of ideas with young people. How can you be successful? and how not to fail. And the third, how can be respected. I'm not a bad person respect. A lot of people in China don't like me because they say I destroy their business. I never destroy anybody's business. They normally people destroy themselves. If you want to be successful, you should have a high EQ. You know, IQ, EQ, and there's another called LQ, the Q of love. If you want to be successful, you should must have a high EQ because a, a person with a high EQ knows how to work with the people, how to understand the people, how to support the people. And if you do not want to fail, normally a lot of people get rich quickly, 
and losing money quickly because they don't have IQ. IQ is intellectual knowledge. You learn. When you have a good knowledge, you know where the knowledge, you will always pursue knowledge to protect your business, protect your people. And when you have high IQ, but the world is very fair. Most people have e high EQ, normally have a low IQ. They don't want to learn because they're smart. They're street smart. They don't want to be academic. Right? But a lot of people very academic, high IQ, but they have a terrible EQ. We have seen a lot of uh, in the university, any university in the world, right? The top one, top one students normally have high IQ but terrible EQ. But they never feel they got disappointed. But even if you have a high EQ and IQ, you made a lot of money, you made a fortune, or you be successful, you become a government person or whatever. But you may not be respected because you don't have a high LQ. The LQ is care for others. Love the others. Respect the future. Respect the young people. So these are three cues that I, I think you, we need to have. So when you're a student, spend more time taking care of the other people. Join the activities that helping people and start, spend time on, on learning. I think this is, this is very, very critical. And I would say that People like me, I'm from nobody. My father was pretty poor. My mother, my father and mother, they, they pay when I was young, their pay put together is six dollars a month. Six, no more than the, the luck, best of time is eight dollars. They have to feed four people. My grandfather, no job, me, my brother, and my sister. It was tough. And even if I failed so many times, the one thing I want to tell God is that failure does never stop me and they've trained me. A lot of people failure and then they complain, oh my God, nobody helped me. I don't have this. Why do people don't help me? Why I don't, cannot get, borrow money from the banks? Why I'm not born in a, in a Bill Gates family? People have a lot of stupid complaints. I have these stupid complaints. All the complaints today young people have, I have them. I had them. I complain Bill Gates, I complain Microsoft, Oracle, all these companies taking all of our jobs. Because we don't have chance. And later I found complaint does not work. I learned from Mr. Why people should help you. Who are you? Why people should help you? Nobody help you, that is very common. People help you, that is uncommon. Those people give you the help. Think about, this is the trust. This is how you did well in your EQ. You, because you care for people. Because you have something good, then people start to help you. I was rejected for so many times, as I said this morning. Over, over 30 jobs applied for rejected. I applied for a KFC. 24 people, classmates went there together. 23 accepted. I was rejected. <laughs> Five people went for police uh, 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 for a job in police. Four people accepted. I was filled. And my cousin and I waited for a two hours long queue to be the waiter of the four star hotel in my city. In a very, very hot day, my bro my cousin's score was much lower than I, than mine. He was accepted, and I was rejected. So, is, is it is it fun? No, not a fun at all. It's very painful. But I get used to it. Everybody, remember, you have to get used to failure. If you cannot get used to failure, just like a boxing, if you cannot be, get used to be hit, how can you win? So I get used to that. And today, I'm surely experienced with a lot of entrepreneurs. I've got a Hupan University training entrepreneurs. The thing we teach the entrepreneurs are different from Harvard MBA. The MBA teach everybody successful stories. When you read too many successful stories, people got it crazy. I can be successful. When you share a lot of failure stories, you learn. So I, when I start Alibaba, 
I give failure stories, cases to every of our co my colleagues. Let them read it. Let them know. We discuss. No matter how smart you are in your business, in your way, you will make the same mistake again and again. The way we teach, share the failure story, not want you to avoid mistakes, is teach you how to face the mistakes when you're in trouble. So as young people, in our life, there is always opportunity. There is always chance. There is always a failure. The thing is how you survive from failure. When you're rejected, how you survive from that. This is how I learned. Even to today, people say, Jack, you are probably one of the most influential people. Anything you want to do, you can do it. No. A lot of things I cannot do. A lot of things. I feel, and I worry much more than I was 1995, or worry much more when I 1999 when I built up my company, because at that time I only worry, take care for 18 people. Today, we have in our company 56,000 people, and today, in our company. When we start to do business, I tell you this, the, 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 the interesting story. How can I do e-commerce? Because nobody, 1999, year 2001, for, nobody believed that they can buy and sell things online. Nobody trusted. You don't have a money, you don't have a credit rating system, you don't have a payment, you don't have a logistic, you don't have an internet. The internet speed was so slow. But look at the Kenya, when I arrived yesterday, the speed, oh my God, I have never seen such a luxury speed. Much better than America. But I bet a lot of people still complain the speed. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because those people love to complain, they complain all their lives. <laughs> the speed was bad, nothing. The government is not ready and don't Sometimes, uh, oh, not sometimes, most of the times, if the government did not know what's going on, it's the opportunity. If your people around you does not agree with you, that's the opportunity. If everybody love it, if everybody want to do it, there's no opportunity for you because the other people are smarter than you are. <laughs> so, I would say nobody using trust internet. And I told 18 founders, I say, I believe internet will be the future. I believe China will have e-commerce. Because they say, then there is no payment. We say, let's build the payment. And they say, there's no logistic. Let's build the logistic. And there's no government support. Let's say it's good. They will support today. Taobao, year 2003. Very interesting. I have seven people. I say, guys, tomorrow we're going to launch the Taobao. But we don't have anything to sell. Can you go back home and search for something so we can list it on, the, on, the, on our site with the people to come to buy? Everybody came back. Seven people, we gathered 21 products. We list on the website. We waited for 72 hours, nobody came to buy. So we buy among ourselves. <laughs> Testing the products. And then uh, like uh, several weeks later, somebody come to sell. Because nobody want to buy, people come to sell. List we buy all the things. For the first two weeks, we bought, oh no, two months, we bought all the garbage. Full of our, because we want to make sure something that you can buy and sell. From that day to last year, we sold 550 billion US dollars. That is ranking 21 countries GDP wise in the world. We are a little bit bigger than Argentina. We created more than 33 million jobs for China. By the way, Minister, we have delivered over 65 million packages per day. 65 million packages per day all over China and the world. This thing, nobody believed. We did not believe. I thought it was big, but 
I don't want to be that big. But say, guys, it was big compared to yesterday, but compared to tomorrow, future, it is tiny. I believe 80% to 90% of the business in the future will be online. Today, we call people entrepreneurs. Few, many years later, we call entrepreneurs because everybody has to be online, called the net entrepreneurs. Today, you can only sell in Nairobi. You are a good, successful person here, but in the future, if you cannot sell your products all over Africa, if you cannot sell things across the countries, you're not a business people. The world is changing very fast. And I'm not scaling you guys. I worry about the new technology. This is the third technology revolution that a human being faces. The first technology revolution takes about 50 years. Second, 50 years. This is 50 years. We're going to have another 30 years, which is very important. The first technology revolution caused World War I. Second technology revolution caused World War II. And this is the third technology revolution. The third technology revolution reduced the human energy. So we know human are not as strong as machine. The second technology revolution released the distance, speed of human beings. So we know we can never run faster than trains. This technology revolution released the human brains. So don't, don't be scared. Machine will be smarter than we are. And imagine, past 20 years, we make people like a machine. In the future, we'll make machine like a people. And data, internet, artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, all the things coming up, the world is facing big challenges. A lot of jobs that you are, we are, we think five years later it will be great jobs, or it's going to disappear. And this is the challenge to the world. But this is also the opportunity of the world. I think change is the best opportunity. Com people complaining is the best opportunity. A company, if you want to be successful, is not how much you are. We got how much money you have. Because we see so many companies have so much money, they are not necessarily can survive. It's what problem you can solve for the world. One of the things I want to share with you that my speciality, my speciality of what, as a CEO of the company, I always think about the future. I think about what the, what the world will look like, what China will look like, what my neighbors will look like, what's the problem they will have in five or ten years. If this is the problem is going to happen to China, if this is the problem is going to happen to my customers, if this is the problem to my neighbors, if I can fix that, if I can start to prepare now, five years later, I will be a successful person. Think about the future. Do not think about, ah, if I do this, I'm going to be very successful. No, if I do this, I can solve a lot of problems at that time. That is the value that we bring. The world is challenging. And a lot of people complain, where is the opportunity? Opportunity always exists in the place where people complain. When people complain, complain think about, how can I solve it? If I can solve it, I have the chance. And where's the opportunity? When change comes, that's the opportunity. If there's no change, big business, rich people, powerful people, always there. Think about how internet can solve Kenya problem. How internet can solve the African problems. Internet, I don't think any small business, any young people in Africa, you have a few opportunities to sell your things across the other country. Only big companies have. So I think this is the greatest opportunity we have. And I think, as I said, people hate globalization. People don't like global trade. I like globalization. I'm a strong believer of globalization. 
But unfortunately, last 20 years, globalization was controlled by 60,000 big companies. Most of the young people, small business, women, they don't, developing countries don't have this chance. But internet comes, this will change. This is what I believe. I use the internet to power, empower everybody. So I would say that we are lucky people. We are lucky because we are at, at entering into a very, very interesting period. And I would say that Africa has the vote. I'm not coming here trying to inspire you. I'm coming here to tell the truth that this morning I found Africa as much more opportunity because you have young people. You have the, the whole world today is worried. I don't know why. Everybody's worried. The whole world today is puzzled. But Africa, I see people have a passion. Uh, people have ideas. People say, this is the future because I think we, are, we have nothing to lose. Europe has a lot to lose. America has a lot to lose. Those countries worry about the losing. They have a lot of puzzle. But Africa, I don't think you have anything to lose. <laughs> and I hear that a lot, a lot of, up, oh, Africa, there are so many opportunities, so many complaints, so many problems. That is the opportunity. If you want to be a big company, solve big problems. If you want to be a small company, solve small com problems, complaints. All the people, I'm lucky enough, I, I'm traveling around the world, I see so many successful people, politicians, business people, scientists, artists. I find one quality that all the successful people share. They never complain. They are always optimistic. And the second, they always partner with good people. So this is something we are entering into a very interesting time. And in Africa, this is, you are the youngest continent in the world. The average age I heard is only 19 years old. That was amazing. That's the future. I, I'm calling on every country. Pay special attention to next 30 years. Every technology, the first 20 years is about technology company. In the past 20 years, internet companies, Google, Facebook, Alibaba, right, Amazon, these companies control. These companies very successful. Next to 30 years may not necessary these companies. For sure, it's not internet company will win next to 30 years. If those companies, those young people using the internet well will win. Car was not invented in America, but American people using car best. Electricity was not invented in America. But America using electricity best. So Africa, we have a terrible, people say we have a terrible internet infrastructure. But I think this is the chance. Why e-commerce grow in China grow better than America? Because we don't have sophisticated e-commerce infrastructure like in America. In America, there are a lot of supermarkets and walls and everything is so good. No. We don't have a payment system. We don't have a credit rating system. Because we don't have that, so we start with high job. China, when I started the e-commerce, people say, even China don't have a telephone. Why do you believe internet will happen? Yeah, we don't have a telephone, then we have a mobile phones. Nobody expect mobile phone grow so fast. Africa, today, I think more than 60% of the people in Africa have a mobile phone. The mobile phone today is much more powerful than, than the PC. I'm lucky I did not study PC. <laughs> With a mobile phone, you connect to the world, right? So this is what I feel that Africa, that the poor infrastructure may giving you the opportunity that you never, you never even imagined. So, the thing that also I want to say, I heard so much about Kenya and Africa. Is it the, you know, the, the forest, the animals, the what? You are guys are living in the paradise. Think about China. China is the kitchen of the world. <laughs> Very dirty now. The air pollutions. So Africa developed. 
you don't have to follow the other country's model. Africa should be Africa. Using the new technology, prevent, protect the environment, protect the animals. It's easy to build buildings, but it is difficult to call the animal bags. It's impossible, right? Tell me where in this world you can see so many elephants flying, still walking. Tell me where in this world you can still smell the real atoms of the new air. That's what, now I understand when I'm arriving why so many people come to Africa every year and go on and on, on. There's no business here, but you have a business to leverage that. And think about it. If you want to build up a manufacturer base, think in a different way. It's impossible to copy China. And even if you copy China, you have no future. Because the world manufacturer is shifting from B to C to C to B. Normal way is business think about something and sell to the consumers. In the future, because of data technology, every manufacturer should be C to B, consumer to business. The manufacturer has to make their products smart, tailor-made, not large scale. China grow in the period of large container, massive, assembly line. Future assembly line is not how many t-shirts you can make for what assembly line with one hour. In the future is how many different t-shirts you can make. How many tailor-made t-shirts you can make. So this is something the world is changing. Africa have to think about the way that Africa is good at. And I would say I would do anything to change if I can be young. Tell you one thing, year, 2000, year 1999, I'm lucky enough to, to find one of the early founders of Yahoo. He was number 40 employees of Yahoo. He joined us, become the CTO of the company. And I asked him, what do you want? He said, Jack, oh, you guys are young. I would spend one million dollars to buy one year. I say, I sell all my age to you. <laughs> Today I realize that young age is something that is the best opportunity. Don't be scared of failure. My assets is so many failure stories. There are a lot of stories about us, about me, but none of the books I read about me. Someday, I may write a book. The book's name is Alibaba 1001. This is the best assets that we need to have. Learn from the mistakes. Learn from other mistakes. Not because you want to avoid the mistakes. Because when you face these mistakes, you know how to face it. How to challenge it. And this is critical. So. I want to share with all the young people here, students, never give up. There's always opportunity there. It's easy to give up. Keep the hope. The world is challenging, but this is opportunity for young people. E-commerce, internet is the opportunity for a country like us, Kenya, China. The best of people say, well, e-commerce, China's no good. The best place in the world for e-commerce, where? Tell me. I think Europe. You have everything. But why Europe has no internet comp good internet companies or e-commerce company? They worry too much. They worry about privacy, security, laws, government ready this, government not ready that. When you worry too much, you're scared to move forward. Don't worry. If you make a mistake, try it again and find the good people. Innovation is not from the government. It's innovation is from your customer, from the market. And finally, I give, if you want to be an entrepreneur, I give you advice. Always remember, customer number one, employee number two, shareholder number three. This is different from America, shareholder number one. I believe customer number one. If you make your customer happy, 
they will pay the money. If you make your employees happy, they will be creative, innovative. If your customer employee happy, the shareholder will be happy. Do not spend a lot of time on your talking to your shareholders. Spend more time to talking to your customers. Spend more time talking to your employees. And making sure it's the employee share the vision. Making sure they are great. And also making sure when you hire your employees, find the good people. Find the people who are smarter than you are. Find the people who can be your boss. You think this guy will be my boss in five years, hire him. <laughs> this is the secret. And also the last secret is making sure high enough women on the internet time. <laughs> this, is, this is the one of the secret source of success for Alibaba. We have 47% of the women 47 to 48% of the colleagues in our company are women. We have 33% of the senior management of our company are women. Not because we want to keep women. We find women can do much better job on the internet time, on the e-commerce. When I start a business, I say e-commerce is not about a computer to talk, talk to computer. E-commerce is about a people to talk to people. But computer is just a proxy, is the front edge. Women take care of the others better than men. <laughs> women understand. Women have much higher EQ than men. When you have IQ, you have to care about the others. See, when you're online, the engineers, I've got a lot of engineers that have a high IQ. They make good program, but they never care whether the program is user-friendly or not. But women make them very user-friendly. And women really care about the customers behind. This make our car, because people like me have no background of technology. The only thing I want to do is make my customer happy. How can I make customer happy? We got a lot of people, and we have a women engineers, women CFO, women CEO, women president. So keep on that. Remember, this is so important. This is why we have seen so many women presidents, women prime minister. I think we're going to have a woman Secretary General of the United Nations. And we need that. And a woman Chancellor. <laughs> so that is something I want to share with you. Uh, I'm not a politician. I'm a business people. As a business people, we're result driven. We're efficiency driven. We're fair driven. We're result driven because you have to get result. Otherwise, you only talk. No result, you die. And for advice I give to Kenya, Africa is speed up. You know what I'm saying? For one day, I, I get some feeling. We have a vision, but you have to go. And the second is efficiency driven. And the third, fair. Business people can never force people to do business with me. It's about a fair trade. So I would say, let's move up. Africa will be the next driving source or driving energy of the world after today's Asia. And this is what I truly believe. And uh, I come here, I don't want to sell anything to you guys. I want to help you to sell your great stuff to the world using internet. Thank you.